probably forgotten everyone's names, but I can pick them up as we go along. The artist that, that I was interested in, so if you remember, people like Hogarth and uh, Bruegel. Uh, what, what, straight away what I'm noticing is just how fantastically you've observed the, the, the painting of the, the skin tones and the, you know, trying to make the faces three-dimensional through the, using the paint, which is a really hard thing to do. Uh, whose is this? This is, uh, this is yours. And you are? Alamedes. Alamedes. So Alamedes, this face here, you know, fantastic work on this face here. <laughs> you can see how that, that nose there is, is the, the light on that, falling on that nose. It, and it really, not only does it sort of give us the three-dimensional qualities of that face, but it also kind of sets, adds to the mood of the painting. You know, there's a kind of melancholy in that painting, a kind of sort of, sort of sadness with the musician. I mean, he's maybe not sadness, but he's very emotionally involved with what he's doing, playing that guitar. But, so, you looked at which one of my paintings um, was one particular? The nightclub, um, kind of part. Yeah, the, the, the nightclub, Ronnie Scott's nightclub. Um, yes. um, and this light that's coming, that's shining down here, and pick out some, some sort of patches of light that would be falling. Can you imagine, you know, try and imagine where this light would be coming down onto these figures. Really nice perspective going on here. You know, it's the changing, the changing scale, which I use a lot in my paintings. You know, what, what, what I'm getting from this work is that, you know, that there, there is a message behind these paintings. You know, what you haven't done is just created a scene for no reason. There's a lot of thought gone into it. You know, so what, what, tell us the story. What's, what's going on? Like, is this lady here? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, um, I really like playing stuff and like, there was one time when I was part of the choir and like, we were singing with other choirs, yeah. just from a lot of school, and like, I really liked playing stuff and like, there was lots of music. Stick em up, punk, it's the fun of a criminal. Stick em up, punk, it's the fun of a criminal. When, I, when I'm out and I'm looking for a painting that I want to paint, some, some scene that I, I want to create, a lot of it kind of happens, you know, I'll go and draw there, but a lot of it happens back in the studio. You know, I've got the sketches that I made, and I've got photographs that I took maybe of the buildings that were around, if it's a street scene. You know, that's really interesting. You, you had the actual event happen, and then you went back and composed the picture, and then you brought in elements of, of still life painting in it, you know, with the guitar, so that you could, you could kind of recreate the whole scene, which is exactly, that's exactly the way I would, you know, trying to make life easier for yourself, really. Um, so you've got these kind of highlights coming through from, from the light, coming through from, from the back of the painting, which I really like. I think probably what I would say is maybe try and sharpen up some of the edges here just a little bit um, because they're, they're, I think you could, it would be more dramatic and it would push, like I was saying here, it would push the figures out more from, from the background. This is yours and you are? Tidal. Tidal. So, you, you got a cold? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, so you, you've got this musician guy playing the guitar again, really nice concentration on his face. What I like about this, well, the, immediately the first thing that I like about this is the angle of the head there. You know, you've done a very difficult thing. You've tried to paint this head kind of, so it's, it's bending forward, so it's kind of slightly coming out of the picture, isn't it? And that's a really difficult thing to, to achieve. How did you, did you, did you draw someone in that position? Or? Yeah, it was, it was more difficult. I think it was that picture to draw. Right. Did you find it difficult getting that head kind of bending forward? Yeah, it was really difficult. Is that why you put the hat on, on the head? Or was no, it right? the hat was because, right. I mean, I, I think you've, you've, you've had a really good go at this. So really just, painting is a lot about thinking about, it's almost like sculpting. So what's, what's the scene in the back here? Where did you get the it's idea? It's about isolation. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Other people are in the front. Yeah. Uh, someone's depressed. Yeah. So, uh, you by just, you just came through imagination? Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, what I've particularly like, you know, talking about that change in scale again, it's the same kind of thing, can, just, you know, thinking about a tile's going to be a bit more shiny, isn't it? You've got that shininess through the, the building up of the paint, and maybe you could just pick up, you know, sort of, just a little patch, just, um, you know, a couple of lines of, 
in there to show us. And you, because that's that's one thing you've got to be conscious of. You know, like I'm saying with the hat, picking out areas of light. Is there a light shining right down on him? Is there? Are these people like? Is there going to be spotlights or? It, right. And where would the spotlights be shining? You know, maybe you could pick out some light on these figures as well. Um, and this, who's is this? Where are you are? Mm -hmm. This is interesting. There's, well, there's, well, you tell me about it first. <coughs> well, um, <coughs> um, Tana and Petra and Wadi up there what? just took some pictures. Uh, and who is this? That's w yeah, Petra. I can see it. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's really, really captures it. You know, I mean, you, you know, what's, sometimes when you it, when you're trying to create a likeness of a person, you can you can make a, a drawing and it can be really perfect and it. It doesn't feel like the person that, that you're drawing on. Other times you can you can paint someone and it you know doesn't necessarily like I mean it's it's fantastic but I don't know what you've done but it really just captures him. It's, it's really I think can you see it as yourself? A little bit. <laughs> but it's, it's really nice. And you know this is to me is really interesting. This these shapes and colours here I and mean, it's almost abstract, isn't it? I mean, what was this? Was this things in the art room? Yeah, that's that's better. Oh, all the posters. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been saying about making things look three-dimensional and building up tones and shapes. But what I like about this, I, I like the contrast of that flatness of his face with the with the kind of tonality of, of the way that you've, you've painted Patrick. There, I think. You no, know, it, it works really well. You know, if you, this is your painting, you know, holding the brush quite low down. And, and just letting that edge of that brush fan out, yeah? So ch always changing the angle of the brush, depending on, on, on where you want to put the line in. And, and there again, you know, and what that will do is it will bring out the figure away from that, from that curtain at the back. Because at the moment, you know, it looks like he's wearing a fuzzy kind of suit, doesn't it? You know, it's like, I'm not clear what, like, when you look at the sharp lines of someone's you know, jacket, it is a sharp line, isn't it? You know, it's changing the, the way you use the brush. And, and by, like you say, loosening up, loosening your arm is going to create looser marks, isn't it? So, you know, think of the brush. The brush is like your, your, your tool for making things happen in the painting. And if you change the way you use the brush, you change the angle of the brush, you change, you know, which part of the brush is in touch, in contact with the canvas, then you're going to change the, 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 the feeling of the thing that you're painting. Okay. This is this. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I could have predicted that. Uh, so, tell us, Patrick, what's going on? It's like a photograph of like a like a like a new, like a saxophone player. Yeah. yeah. But like not like but not like today, like 80s, 70s. Yeah. He's, a, he's a cool dude, isn't he? Who was it modeled on? Who did you use? Oh, it was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> It, I mean, I, I love it. It's a really strong, powerful image. I think you could build up, I mean, you've started to do it in the face, like I was saying about some of the other boys' work, but I think you could build up more in the face, like put some more different patches of light falling on the face. How are we doing for time? Oh, okay. You wanted to ask about or any techniques that, that you think I might have used in, in my paintings? Yeah, I've got a question. <coughs> like, when you paint your like, work, yeah, what kind of style do you like, like to use? And your kind of style is more like, is it more kind of cartoonish or kind of yeah, more it's, it's really, realistic? Yeah, it's a very good question because it's something that I get asked a lot. How would I describe my, my style of painting? And I don't know if I really have an answer, you know? I mean, I just, I try not to think about things like that and I just do what I do. You know, I just follow the, the things that I like and I look at the painters that I like and I take bits of them and, and mix them around and, and put it back together through, through my own eyes and the things that I'm experiencing now. But in terms of like a stylistic description, I, I don't know, I mean, I mean, one, one, one word that I, I Maybe something like ma magic realism. How long, how long, how long does it take you to finish like a painting average? Well, that's a really hard question to answer because, as you know, you know, it takes as long as it takes, doesn't it? You know, I mean, if you if you're 
if you're not in the mood, if it's not going well, if you're not concentrating, it can take a lot longer. If you're tired, it can take a lot longer. Right, I want to sit down, I want to paint, I want to do nothing else for the next three hours. Then, you know, it can go very, you can do so much, do more in three hours than you can do in a week. And sometimes that happens to me. What can I, how can I go back and change what I did before? Because what I did before doesn't quite look right now. So it's, you're constantly making adjustments to make the painting better and better, communicate more what it is you're trying to communicate. So the answer is, it, it just depends, you know, it depends how, how it's going, how you are in your head. How do you work with emotions? That's a very good question. Uh, I, firstly, I think by looking at, looking at people like uh, Hogarth, when I was a kid, there was a, there was a Hogarth book that I used to look at, like cartoons, you know, I looked at a lot of cartoons, and what I loved about Hogarth was that in his paintings, he, all the expressions of, of the people in his paintings, you know, convey so much about what they're thinking in their faces. Yeah, and I, I just was fascinated by that. And I was always drawing faces. You know, I, I wasn't so much bothered about the rest of, of the figure. I would always just draw the expressions of, of people, just hundreds and hundreds of faces. And every time I walked down the street, I was always looking at people's faces and thinking, how would I draw that? So even if I didn't have a sketchbook on me, you know, I, I, I could spend time, you know, in my head drawing. You know, so I, I think that that's that's. That's the beginning, and then really spending a lot of time drawing. Um, so, yeah, it also depends perhaps on how I'm feeling when I'm drawing and painting the person that I'm painting in that picture. Now, what advice uh, can you give uh, to people at our age uh, yeah. to like to continue art? Because when I was younger, I loved art. I liked to draw. Yeah. But then as I grew, as I grew much older, I didn't like painting art much as important as I did before. Yeah. So like what kind of advice? What about now? Yeah, it's starting to come back. Really. <laughs> That's good, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, so well, it I should do. Which was yours again? This one? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, yeah, I can clearly see that it's come back. You know, you don't paint like this for, for no reason. You, know, you paint like this because you're, you've studied and you've, you've learned things and you're interested in how the face works. You're interested in who this character is. And, and it's up to you now. Uh, you've got those skills, you know, you can just move on and do other things if you want, and life may take you in that direction. Or you might want to say, well, hang on a minute, I've got something here. You know, whether I go and study it and continue to study it, I can always keep this going. You know, you, you know you, did, did they make these canvases? Or? So you know how to make these canvases. You, you know that you can get a bit of canvas, staple it to a bit of wood and make a stretcher frame, which doesn't cost all that much money, really. You can get some acrylic paints. You can keep painting, you know. And, and it's a great thing just to have for yourself, you know, to have that kind of. For me, probably actually, one of the most important things about painting is being alone with yourself in a room, just working on something. So yeah, studying art is probably the most important thing. Looking at paintings, and going into galleries, which are free and enjoying that process and all the time thinking about, you know, when you can, thinking about drawing and thinking about what, what do I want to draw. I may run out of ideas, I may, I may suddenly decide that it's too much for me to, to keep painting like I'm painting, you know. Maybe I change my style, people don't like it, but I change it because that's the only way that I can, you know, I can move forward. Yeah, man. Any other ambition other than to be an artist? Uh, I wanted to be a policeman when I was a kid. Stop that idea. Um, well, no, I, I, I really I think the only other ambition I have is to be a teacher, really, because I really enjoyed teaching. Um, that, was the, that was the only thing that, that made any sense to me, you know. And it's funny, you know, when you think about it, what I'm doing now is kind of exactly what I was doing when I was a kid. I'm just drawing faces. Say, say like you don't like go through all like the stages of getting G um, A levels and like masters and yeah. art. Can you like just draw for fun and people buy your paintings? It's, people do. Yeah. People have done that. It's a difficult thing to do. You know, I mean, it's a difficult thing to do 
partly because you may not have the determination to see it through unless you're surrounded by people in that world. You know, you need people to kind of give you advice and, and direct you in a certain direction. I mean, you'd have to be very, very determined and have a bit of luck and making the right connections with galleries and, you know, I would say the more likely thing to do is to is to go into that world and take from it what you need, you know, if if that's the path you want to follow. I really hope, and probably you won't all do this, but I really hope that you come back and get these paintings, and I really hope you take them home and you put them on your wall because that's what paintings are for. You know, that's why Miss King puts all the work up in the room because you know there's no point in making something and spending all that time if people aren't going to enjoy it. And I hope that, because one day you'll bring some girl back to wherever you're living and you'll show them one of these paintings and they'll go, oh, I really like that picture, who did that? And you'll go, I did that. And, you know, that's how I met my wife. So, <laughs> so One of the main things, the main way that I learnt about art was through looking at paintings, through looking at any books that I could get hold of, but mainly through going to art galleries and looking at the real paintings, and I would call that probably informal, yeah, because it's not, you're not being taught by someone, you're learning it for yourself. And even though I went and did a degree, the most learning that I did was not from my tutors, but it was from looking at the painters that I wanted to look at, you know, and learning from other people. The museums and galleries in particular in this country have so many good paintings and good things that you can just go in for free and go and see, or your parents have bought them for you, because through taxation, they and you own those paintings, okay? so they belong to you. So you should be going into those museums and just seeing what's there and getting what you can from it because, you know, it, it enriches your life. And the one in the train station where the, 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 um, the train people are pushing the passengers onto the train. One year down for the Mexican, the, like, the, the, the term of like, the dead, the like, so Oh, the day of the dead? Yeah. The religious thing. Yeah. When they're dancing around this one. Yeah, the sun dance. Yeah, that's, that's scary. If it's <laughs> She'd be really affected by that. <laughs> Everybody happy! You can't come in! You can't come in! How'd it go? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, a uh, great bunch of kids, great work. Yeah, it's quite emotional coming back. They, they've done some really good work, I think. You know, it's really, it's, it's, you know, it's really touching to see how they they take them to it. And, you know, they're, they're really, seem really proud of it as well. And, uh, yeah, it's funny being back.
what to do. Now you know this is the end.